So in a previous episode, I'm fine now, I had a look-see at the Kanzawa drill guide that I was really quite happy with. I, I think this is a really cool piece of kit. Now, one of the commentators in my video suggested that it would be interesting to find out just the ultimate accuracy of this drill guide, and, and I tended to agree. I thought, well, just how, how good is this for drilling like a deep hole in wood? Now, if you want ultimate accuracy, what do you need? If you want ultimate squareness, well, you need a, like a one-ton milling machine and as short a bit as possible. And, well, clearly this is not the case. So I, I thought that would be worth investigating. Now, what goes into getting a nice square hole? I figured that there are three different factors at play uh, all of which need to be met to get a really, really accurate hole, and if, if any of them are, are, are busted up, then, well, then um, your, your results may vary. Now, number one, you need to have system squareness. You need to have the axis that the drill is working, the quill of the drill, the chuck of the, of the drill, it needs to be perpendicular to the surface. Perpendicularity is of absolute importance. You can't even approach a hole if you're not achieved that level. Now, if you have one of those drill guides that, that flops over to the side, you might need a little bit more foreplay to get it properly, properly squared up. This Kanzawa, however, I chose it because it's already gets me most of the way there, and I appreciate that greatly. Now, number two coaxialness. Coaxialness is whether the drill bit is actually coaxial with the quill. Now, why would it not be coaxial with the quill? Walking. If you are using a twist bit, now this is more a problem with metal than with wood, but if you're using a twist bit and you're going into metal, it's going to skitter all over the surface. And when it finally bites in and starts going at the hole, and once the hole is started, the drill self guides itself. But if the hole is started off of the main axis, then it's going to go and crook it, and it's going to continue to go and crook it. So coaxility is something of great importance, and different bits are going to have different propensities to walk or not walk. And for wood, it shouldn't be an issue as long as you're using the proper bit. If you're using a, a bit with a nice point, like a Brad point or a Forstner bit or something like that, it should work. Twist bits probably would work as well, uh, but, but eh, there might be some some results may vary. Uh, Partly because a twist bit, especially a large one, when it starts the hole in wood, the hole is not a nice symmetrical shape. Instead, it takes this weird triangular shape, and I think it's a little bit like the butterfly effect, where subtle perturbations are just exactly when the bit starts digging in, it might not be perfectly coaxial with the quill, and if that's the case, then your hole's going to go all, all weird. Something that you could use to try to alleviate that situation is a prick punch, a uh, center punch. Well, center punch is more for machining. But uh, here's, here's my prick punch. It's a little carbide point in a 60 degree angle. And it, it's, it's, an, it's a small enough of an angle that I can just jam it into even the hardest of woods, and it makes a nice little, makes a nice little crater to center the drill bit. So, one, two, three. The third possibility for causing this hole to go askew would be flex. Particularly long bits, bits that are flexible because they're thinner, they're not as thick in diameter, and I think normally that shouldn't be too much of an issue it, 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 once the, the drill has actually got into the material, but hypothetically material that's not homogenous, like laminated wood, it, it is, I, I suppose there's maybe a possibility that, that the drill bit might veer off. Certainly, flexibility in the drill bit 
will allow more walking and before the, the bit actually gets, gets started. So how am I going to test this? So I got this piece of hard maple that made an appearance in the earlier video and it is about two and a little less than a half inches wide by about three and a half inches and notice that it is three different boards that are laminated and where I'm going to do the test holes are right along the lamination and that might check for dissimilar materials to some extent as well. It's a little bit thinner than the base of the Kanzawa so it will be a little bit challenging to get this to be nice and firm. Just to keep things real, I'm not going to actually be clamping this down. I'm going to just try to use use my hand action to, to, to no, like I think that most people would want to be using this unit. Now I have some lines here as well as I've already put little punch craters in at the intersections of these lines and we will be testing a variety of bits and I have three uh, holes for each bit. Replication. Science, you know. So, let's see the contenders. First up, I have a standard twist bit. It is one eighth. It's a jobber's length. It is high speed steel. Triumph made in the United States, 118 degrees. This is pretty similar to a standard drill bit that anybody else would be using. So for Triumph, I will be using those three holes marked T. And for a proper bit, I have a 1 8 inch brad point. Let me remove the factory supplied snot. And you can see that it has this wonderful lipped brad point CNC machine, nonetheless. At least that's what the marketing gobbledygook at Lee Valley says. I figure that this bit should have an excellent ability to drill an accurate hole. Brad point I will put next to the bees. After that, we have a default uh, multi-material bit. <laughs> I got this because it's one eighth as well. It's really quite a long bit. It has a fair bit of flexure to it. And because it's multi-material, it has that not very sharp carbide end. And the main body, the drill is actually sub-sized. It's not one eighth. Only the tip is one eighth. So the default I'll put there under D. I got three holes there for the next bit, which will be a Norseman twist bit, and I will be using a 3 8 mechanics length. And this is really a poor choice for drilling into wood because this bit is 135 degrees. Uh, even on metal, if you're not using a proper little crater caused by a center punch, this thing will just walk all over the place. It is a split point, however, so that should help uh, at least a little bit. Anyways, there's our fourth contestant. Next up, I got three holes marked F, and F will be for the Freud Forrester bit, and this one is also three-eighths in... Was this three-eighths? No, this is one half in size, one half of an inch in size. And it does have the nice centering point and it has these cutting spurs that should make a really, really neat hole. Uh, thick shank. I figure that this should be pretty accurate. Not very long, though. So I'll put that there for the Fs. And this bit here. I was at Blows the other day getting some bits for this test and... My wife took one look at this and she said, you don't need to do that any faster. And I said, well, I try to do everything as fast as I can. Well, by the look on her face, I could tell that she also was skeptical about this bit and that I should test it too. So I, for Irwin, will go with those three holes and we got a 3 8 inch bit, which would be comparable to 
the Norseman twist bit. And then lastly, just two holes with little danger symbols for uh, this self, self, uh, uh, you call it self, um, self feeding bit, auger style. But this is really meant for softwood. These are, 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 th are they're three flutes, so they just, just rip through wood like nothing. I, I only got the set actually for the bigger sizes. You know what I use them for? I use them for removing roots and like tree stumps. And, and you put in an impact driver and it just it just shreds it into nothing but sawdust in, in no time flat. So, those are the contestants. Let's find out. Okay, here are the preliminary results, and they are about as expected. The brad points with the pointy ends, they hit the target really well, and they're nice and centered. Uh, the spade bit as well with the pointy end, well, it, it's very nice and uh, nice and centered. Even the auger bit with that screw tip, which is not very accurate, it still is not bad. The Freud bits did pretty well. Uh, oh, this one here is my own screw up. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, I, th I think that there you can get quite good accuracy with them. However, the Norseman 135 degree. Look at how off all of those are. Terrible. The the the, the default uh, multi-material bit as well. None of the holes went on target, and the the, the standard 118 twist bits. Eh, not bad, not great. Anyways, let's uh, let me clean up the holes and give them a little bit of a camphor, and I'll test for perpendicularity. Okay, and on to the results. First thing to note is that the bits of constant diameter, the twist bits and the brad point bits, they made very clean holes, as well did the Freud. I'm using these transfer punches and. I can evaluate whether the hole is nice and straight and tidy and well these bits make tidy holes. Now in contrast this multi-material bit with the wider tip it really doesn't go in very nicely whatsoever. It's supposed to be normally one-eighth and obviously the hole is just all wavy and this transfer punch is not fitting in very well. Similarly, the uh, spade bit as well as the auger bit, the, those holes are really loosey-goosey, so that's not too too surprising. Well, to evaluate perpendicularity, what I did is I hammered these in and I used a little protractor and I found the, the greatest angle for every one of these holes and compared them all and the results were I suppose not too surprising in that the bits that have a nice point and go on target have the best angles. These brad points are within a half a degree. Uh, the small twist bits they also went in pretty well a little bit more uh, a little bit more but still an average of close to half a degree the norsemans went in well with a little bit of a, a little bit more than half a degree these dewalt multi material were awful they went in around 3 degrees off of perpendicular uh, the spade bits were not bad they went in with an average of about 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 0.75 of a degree. The Foresters weren't too good. They they went in with an angle of about uh, two degrees on average. And surprisingly, the auger bits uh, they they went in pretty well. Their 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 maximum angle was of only about a half or maybe three quarters of a degree. A little bit difficult to measure though because these transfer punches are not fitting in very 
uh, very assuredly. Anyways, there you go for a check out for the Kanazawa accuracy and really what it comes down to are the drill bits and the setup. Anyways, thanks for watching. Take care and bye bye.